I don't want to belabor <clears throat> every every little detail uh, that I find in this Philco schematic, but I will say this: a Philco 630B is not a beginner's radio. Stay away from this radio if you're if you're just starting out. Find something a little easier to work on, and not that it's all that complicated, but it is complicated. Not not because it has electronics and all that, but because of the way Philco worked things. And I'll give you an example. This radio is supposed to have three Bakelite blocks. Now, Bakelite blocks are these, uh, let me see what I see with that gun. There it is. The Bakelite blocks, bear with me here a minute. It's supposed to have three of these, okay? It's supposed to have one here, right there. It's supposed to have another one right here. And the third one is down here under all this stuff here. Unfortunately, this one here is missing. The only Bakelite block I have is here and here. That complicates things. Here's the one right there on the right. And, and the one that was down here under all that stuff is this one right here. That complicates things. Because each of these Bakelite blocks that I have hold two capacitors. But on the schematic, it only shows one capacitor. Now, I've blown this section up right here on the Bakelite block that I'm working on right now. This one. So let's take a look at the blow up of this. After run 2, the 99,000 ohm resistor was changed to a 20K, and the 20,000 ohm resistor was changed to a 10K. Now, the 20 and the 20K, of course, one end connects to the capacitor, which is inside the Bakelite block, that one right there, and it says 0.3. The other end of the 20K resistor connects to ground, which is what we have right here. Other than the fact the resistor needs to be replaced, it's out of tolerance. But one end is connected to ground, which is this uh, pin, this stud right here. Well, I'm having lighting problems like a big dog here tonight. One end of the 20K resistor is connected to right there, which, which is ground. The other end is connected to a, uh, a terminal that the capacitor inside the block is hooked to. There's three holes in the center. There's one there, there, and there. This one right here has two wires coming out of it. And there's one wire here, and one wire here, coming up from the inside of the block. Now what that tells me, if you have two wires hooked to the ground connector right here, and then one here and one there, that tells me there's two capacitors inside there. But yet when you look on the schematic, you only see one. Now, a newbie, a guy just starting out on this, you know, he'd say, what is going on here? This is crazy. If he even figured out so much that this one was even inside the big light block, which is kind of hard, but you, know, you can figure it out by going between the parts list and the schematic, parts list and the schematic, uh, you can find out that number 51 is inside the big light block, and it's a 0.3 microfarad. A single cap, but yet we have two coming out of here. Now, why is that? Why do we have two caps, but only one on the schematic? Pretty simple, really. They didn't have or didn't want to. I'm not sure what the reasoning is. They didn't. I'll just assume they didn't have a 0.3 microfarad cap. So what they did was they stuck a 0.1 and a 0.2 in there in parallel, which equaled the 0.3. When you put capacitors in parallel, they add. Now, how do I know it's in parallel? Look at that jumper wire between that connector and that connector. That would be this side of the 20K resistor. They connected two of the plates together before the other side was connected to ground. We have two capacitors connected in parallel.
with that jumper right there to equal the point three. So I hope I think I might have a point three. I'm not if I'm not mistaken. If not, I'll have to go with two capacitors myself. The next step is to get this tar-like substance once again out of the bakelite block so I can get in there and tear those resistors out. I mean those capacitors out and clean that mess up. Incidentally, the bakelite block that's missing is the one that housed these two 0.015 microfarad capacitors that are across the the uh, primary uh, power line here and you know I look for an impression on the bottom of the chassis none there that that shows where a bakelite block might have been connected so I think it was never installed at the factory it might have uh, since this was a second run uh, radio or this radio was part of the second run. They may have decided to eliminate that as a as a cost cutting move. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't think it was there originally. But you know, I can always put a terminal strip in, and then connect a couple of 0.015 microfarad capacitors across the line if I wanted. I don't know. I might do that. Right now we got bigger fish to fry. We'll come back to this later. So how do we get that potting compound out of this out of these bakelite blocks? really nothing to it actually piece of cake you can see the little wires uh, maybe I don't know coming up out of here 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 and here you have to take a, sh a pair of sharp dikes and snip those wires that's the first thing you do and then make sure the wires are are bent up and no, no longer connected to the solder which this one is I just clipped it good now I'll clip the next two the same way the next thing to do is take the old solder sucker and uh, the old uh, soldering iron and heat, heat these uh, connections up and extract all that old solder off there. I like to do that before I get ready to remove the stuff inside the block. Now that all the uh, tiny little wires have been desoldered, I don't know if you can see them in my hand there, they're pretty tiny little things. Anyway, We've got them desoldered from the three connectors. Now I need to heat this baby up with a heat gun. And here's the way it works. After it gets nice and warm, nice and soft on the inside, you don't need to heat it up to the point where it you know, begins to crackle and snap. But you, you have to heat it up on the back side, both sides, the end, around and around and around, get it nice and warm. And then you take your small jeweler screwdriver and you push it down through these holes here and here or here and until you hit you will hit one of the capacitors that's in there and when you push down it's supposed to come oozing out it's supposed to, the whole thing is supposed to come just start coming out the bottom here and once that begins you're home free it's just a matter but be careful you know this this block does get hot from the heat gun so Let's see if that works. You know, it's worked every other time, and of course the one time I want to show you folks is the one time it probably will not work. So let's see what happens. Let me start heating this baby up. Alright, I think it's hot enough. Let's see if I, when I push down on this uh, thing whether or not it will come out the bottom. Hopefully it will. If not, I'll just have to work at it. Well, it's stuck down into there. Let's push over here and see what happens. It's starting to bulge a little bit. Apparently, I don't have it hot enough. We'll heat it up a little bit more. All right, she's she's beginning to move out of there. Slow but sure. Yeah, I had to go through all three holes to start getting some movement. And as you can see, it's beginning to come out the bottom. See it right there? It's getting the shiny part. It's beginning to come right on out. So I'll push down a little bit more, working back and forth, and we'll get it out of there. And there she is, beginning to come out nicely now. I tipped it over, and these are the capacitors in there. If you've never seen inside a big light block, I know this is kind of cool for you. I kind of felt that way the first time I looked inside one. It was like opening up a little treasure chest or something. 
Anyways, all kinds of little stuff that needs to be picked out of there now. Uh, paper, a little bit of paper. But uh, trying to do it one hand is kind of a bummer. But there, there's your little capacitor. There's your little capacitor. And here's another one. Now it's just a matter of cleaning up the inside of that thing, getting all that crap out. And uh, by the way, uh, uh, Q-tips, once you get the majority of the stuff out of there, Q-tips and lacquer thinner uh, really do the job the best. Really, let me see if I can get down here and give you a good show there. Lacquer thinner and Q-tips really clean it up. I'll show you the uh, finished version later. Well, that's it for this uh, video. I'm not going to keep wearing it down and wearing it down. Uh, next time we'll uh, hopefully have a lot more completed under the chassis. I just wanted to show you what was going on with this particular Bakelite block that you might run into someday if you ever buy a Philco. This is John.